Sporting dog adventures run, that boy, was run. Awesome. Everything you Good need boy. is here, here under the sun. Everything you need is here under the sun. Hey, welcome to Sporting Dog Adventures and What's Cooking with Kate. Kate, what are we going to have today? We are going to make pheasant parmesan. Pheasant parmesan. This is going to be exciting and I cannot wait to try it. It'll be really, really yummy. It's not probably as fast or simple as some of the other recipes we've done, but if you're looking for something different to do with pheasant, this is different. All right, so I actually prepared the pheasant, cut it off the breast, got it cut into nice clean strips, mm -hmm. cut the fat off, took any shot away. So we are ready to go with the meat. What is the first step? We're going to do an egg wash and then we're going to do our breading. So um, if you want to just go ahead and get the eggs ready, we just have two eggs in a bowl. Okay, so we just got to whip the eggs. Whip those. And then what we have in the bowl here is a combination of panko crumbs, uh, Italian breadcrumbs, some Parmesan cheese, um, the two breadcrumbs are in equal proportions. There's about one cup each, and then there's about a half a cup of the cheese in here. So we're just going to incorporate. All right, so now we're just going to dunk and dunk. Yep. Okay. Do you have a fork I can use for dunkage? Yes. Let's incorporate I'm that. Actually, I'm going to put this here. Always make sure your stove's not on if you're going to do this, kids. Give my fork. All right, so we're just dunking it in, getting egg on all of it and then setting it into there. Just press the crumbs on. Okay, so do we have to put oil in our pan at this point? Yes, we're going to use a combination of olive oil and actually a little bit of butter. Uh, if you do just the one or the other, it's fine, but I kind of like them both. Okay, so I want to make sure I don't turn on the one that's the cooking <laughs> no. area here. So we've got that on. So how much olive oil are we going to use? Just enough to put a little in the bottom of the pan so things aren't sticking. Maybe two tablespoons or so. Okay. And then the same with the butter. Okay, so we're going to let that heat. Yep. Put that back. And I guess we can stick a few more of these in sure. here. Sure, there's plenty of room in the bowl here. Another option for the breading is you can actually use a heavy whipping cream instead of egg if you'd like. Um, I just tend to use egg because everybody has eggs at home. Not everybody has heavy whipping cream. All right, we are full up here. All right, we're getting our stuff done here. So we're gonna get our pan set. One thing that's a little bit different uh, about using pheasant versus using chicken if you've made this with chicken in the past you can tell the pieces of meat are smaller they're not nearly as thick no. so everything as far as timing goes in cooking is going to go faster Let's get some of these guys out. that one's not done yet nope. no Okay. All right. All right. That's enough. Okay, so that's enough. So yep. put the rest of this into the fridge. I think Rommel wants to try everything. I can hear him walking around back there in the uh, living room. He can smell us cooking. Yeah, he always wants to be the sampler, the taste test dog, which it's, he's very talented. It's because we always let him. He's old, so we spoil him. All right. That's it. So that's it. So do we need this fork this. anymore? You can use it for um, flipping the pieces. For flipping, okay. So these will go pretty quickly because they're, they're very small pieces of breast meat. Now, are we browning these? What temperature should we put these at while we're cooking them? We're basically pre-cooking them. We're actually gonna finish them in the oven. So this part is actually going to go very quickly. So do we want it high heat so it kind of browns them? 
No, not really. You're just, just getting them started. They're going to go in the oven and because it is pheasant, they are very small pieces of meat, the oven's gonna take care of the rest. They will be pink when we put them in there. We know that and that's fine. Sporting Dog Adventures is presented by the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism, Boucher Automotive, Fleet Farm, Heavy Shot, Mac Outdoors, Rite Inertia Driven Shotguns, and Soggy Acres Retrievers. Hey, welcome to Season 9 of Sporting Dog Adventures. Please like our videos, share them, and spread the word to all your friends. So like I said, our goal isn't to cook it thoroughly. It's just to get it pre-cooked before it goes yeah, into the oven. it's just browning up a little bit. Yeah, so just maybe another minute and we're gonna move them right over into a foil-lined baking pan. Perfect, all right. So if you wanna grab our pan. Okay, and this was just a piece of foil that we put in, yep. formed it around. Yep, it doesn't have to be fancy. The pieces are very small. They're not gonna stick to the sides clearly or anything like that. So we're probably almost ready to move them into there. Okay, so we're ready? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna turn our heat off so I don't forget it. And then we're going to put these in here. We preheat the oven um, to 450 degrees. If you are using a thicker mead, um, if, like I said, if you've made it with chicken in the past, you're probably looking at a cook time in the oven of 20 minutes. We're probably looking at about half as much. This would actually, looking at the size of this meat, if you wanted to do something like this, even with like chicken and do like chicken tender style cuts, it'd be kind of good. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so that's it for that. So the next part, we're going to put some tomato paste with a little Italian seasoning on the top. Okay, can you give me a knife for the... Yeah, let's use that. And then I'm going to put some on and then probably use, do you have a spatula I can use to kind of smear it a little bit? You can use a spaghetti sauce, a commercially prepared spaghetti sauce if you'd like. Okay, is that enough now? Yep, that's plenty. So that's, uh, Six pieces, and it's about a half a can of paste. And if you let the paste sit on there a little bit, it actually warms it up so that it doesn't pull your breading off. And the breading and mixture had, did it have cheese in it? Yes, there's cheese. So there's a little bit of cheese in the breading mixture we made and that actually is helping it to stay on there. It's almost like it's glued the uh, stuff on there. So what all goes into the breading? I mean, as far as what are we putting into that that we just put on these little pieces of pheasant? That was equal proportions of panko and Italian breadcrumbs, and then one half as much on the Parmesan cheese. That's good. It's gonna heat, so it's gonna you don't have to be too fancy okay. or fussy. I'm just gonna show everyone here. And if you have used tomato paste like we did, I do like to add a little sprinkle of Italian seasoning. So we got panko, we got Italian breadcrumbs, Italian breadcrumbs, Parmesan and cheese, Parmesan cheese that we put on the meat after the egg wash, and now we've got tomato paste. Perfect. If you've used spaghetti sauce, you don't need to do this part. Your okay, cool. sauce has already been seasoned. But we didn't, we went with the paste. So you don't need much. So that's about how much we used there. That worked out real well. And now what are we putting on? More cheese, of course. Okay. So this is a combination between a provolone, a Parmesan, and a mozzarella. And it's funny, you sent me to the store and I was supposed to get shredded provolone and I could not find shredded provolone. So what I did was I got very thinly sliced, almost for like sandwiches and I actually cut it up and diced it. And it turned out really well. I just put it on a cutting board. It's perfectly fine. Okay, and we just kind of Sprinkle liberally put this on? Yep, people love cheese, so you can go pretty crazy with that. Well, I get to eat it later, so uh -huh. I love cheese. It's gonna get all melty and bubbly in the oven. Um, that's what the oven's purpose is. It's gonna finish cooking the chicken and it's gonna make the cheese. Now to make this look really pretty, are we gonna wanna put a little, save a little cheese for like right at the end so that it's like 
This is going to go so fast you don't have to do that, but we, what we are going to do in the last couple minutes is we're going to put some basil on the top. All right. So that is what we're looking like with the cheese. All right. So you can put the foil on the top. Okay. Foil. And that's ready for the oven. All right. What do we have the oven set at? It was preheated to 450. So we got it preheated to 450. How long are we going to cook this for? We're going to watch it. I'd say about 10 minutes. So we'll put the timer on 10 minutes. You obviously oh, need to be uh, cautious of um, the chicken being fully cooked, not pink, but you don't want to over dry it, overcook it, or it just will not be All good. All right. We're timed to 10 minutes. We're at 450 on heat. Is there anything else that we would do right now? Nope. We're just going to wait till it cooks and then we'll put our season or our spices on at the end and that's it. Now, what would be a good thing to go with our pheasants? People ask that a lot. Um, Obviously, the stereotype is to put it on a bed of pasta of some sort, either angel hair or spaghetti or something like that. But there are other options. You can serve it exactly as it is with just a side of garlic bread. Um, you can serve it with a side of a salad with like a balsamic. Um, you don't have to put it on pasta if you don't want to. Cal recently got a job at Dunkin' Donuts. I could serve it with a side of like no, donuts. No, that's disgusting. No, okay. That's well, totally you know, disgusting. let it try. No. I lost my eyebrows. All right. Wow, that looks cool. It does. So we'll leave the foil off. We're going to put a little bit of spice on the top, some basil. If you have fresh, that's even better. I don't cook with basil that often, so we don't always have fresh. We have dried. That's good. So you can just pop it back in for the last couple minutes. Can you see how much we got and how pretty it looks. It looks awesome. Now we'll stick it back in for a few minutes. All right. Almost done. I'm excited. I'm hungry. All right. Should be done now. The moment of truth. We did it check it a few times. Amazing. Oh, so beautiful. Wow. That looks awesome. Yummy. Now, this is my favorite part is I get to eat. Thank you. That's for you. And you can tell it is moist and tender. Like you said, the cheese incorporated with the breading almost keeps it like insulated so it doesn't over dry. All right, start on Careful, this end. it might be really hot. That's right. It's done perfect. It's not pink. It looks, you can see the, the moisture on it right there. So it's actually done perfect. It's beautiful. Mm. Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you asked, you can serve it with a salad, you can serve it with breadsticks, garlic bread, or with the traditional pasta. It's got a lot of great flavors too that just pop as you're chewing it. If you guys want a great recipe to use for your pheasant, your duck, or you can use it for chicken, you need to try this. Yep, the pheasant parmesan. That's it for What's Cooking with Kate. Don't forget to catch us next week. Nothing beats a good pheasant hunt with my sons. We're headed to Kansas this winter. The state has some of the world's best populations of upland game, making it one of America's top bird hunting destinations. Kansas provides mixed bag opportunities and 1.5 million acres of public hunting lands. All that makes Kansas an ideal destination. The season runs from the second weekend in November to the end of January. Go to ksoutdoors.com and plan your trip today.